Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Lenovo Legion Y540. This is a mid-tier gaming laptop, and we actually looked at one of these last summer, but it was the smaller version. Uh, so this is the 17-inch one. The last one we looked at was a 15-inch. And this one is configured slightly differently in that it has an RTX 2060 GPU versus the 1660 Ti that was in the other one. And given that this product line is reaching the end of its life cycle, you might be able to find a good deal on it. So I figured, hey, let's review it again and see what kind of differences there are between the 2060 and the 1660 Ti. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Again, this has the 17-inch display, so it's larger than the other laptop, but both of them are running at 1080p and that means you're not going to fit anything more on the screen, nor will you be able to do any kind of screen scaling to improve image quality. You're just getting a larger screen at the same resolution. The screen does, though, run at 144 hertz, which is great for gaming, uh, but note this display doesn't support G-Sync. If you go to the more expensive Y740, you'll get a G-Sync display as part of the deal. And there's a few other little differences between the 540 and the 740, which allows this to be sold for a lower price. Now, speaking of price, I'm seeing this one starting right now at about $1,000 with a 1650 GPU, and it kind of goes up from there. But again, I think you're going to be able to find some deals on this as the product begins to end its life cycle. So keep an eye out. Uh, for pricing and be patient and maybe you might get yourself a good deal. Now this computer came equipped with an i7-9750H processor. That's a six core chip. Uh, it also has that 2060 GPU with six gigabytes of video memory on board. Uh, this one has 16 gigs of RAM and it has a one terabyte SATA spinning hard drive, a mechanical hard drive, along with a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Now you can upgrade the RAM and the storage if you want, but of course not the processor or GPU. So you'll have to choose carefully uh, when you go out and buy it. It's not hard to get into it. In fact, you can just do two screws on the front here to get at the RAM and storage. You have to do a few more screws to get at the fans and battery if you want to do more work on it later. Now given this is a larger laptop, it's got some weight to it. It's about six and a quarter pounds. Uh, that is roughly 2.84 kilograms, so it's definitely going to weigh you down a bit, but it is a big laptop. Uh, I did find the build quality on this is not quite as good as the more expensive Y740 that has more metal in it. Uh, this is mostly plastic, but it feels nice. It's got a nice sturdy hinge here that stays in place. As you can see here, you've got a good amount of range for the display position, and the uh, hinge here just has a really good feel to it, and it largely stays put where you put it. Uh, you don't have a touch screen on this, of course, but uh, it really is a nice looking machine that feels pretty solidly built for its mid-tier price point. Uh, this is also not an entirely obnoxious design like we sometimes see with these gaming laptops. Uh, there's no RGB on this one. It's just a white backlight for the uh, keyboard here, so it's something that might fit in well in a professional environment. I've actually started using gaming laptops for video production. In fact, I'm producing this entire video uh, on my Y740 over there as an experiment this week, and it's been working terrifically. These laptops are incredibly powerful. Uh, as for ports on this one, we've got a, a bunch to look at, actually. You've got a USB 3.0 port over here. You have your headphone microphone jack there. Uh, you do have a lot of cooling on here to keep the laptop uh, running at its optimal performance. We'll talk about what we measured related to cooling in a few minutes. On the other side here, you've got another full-size USB 3.0 port. You've got your BIOS reset over there. Uh, we have a Kensington lock here on the back. This is good for college students. You can lock it down so nobody can take it from you. Uh, you do have a USB Type-C port here. Uh, this is not Thunderbolt though, so that's another thing that's missing on this one versus the more expensive 740. So you just have USB-C, no Thunderbolt, but you can get a video out of that. Uh, you should not though use this for power. It won't power the laptop because it does have a big 230 watt power supply that needs to get plugged in over here. 
Uh, next to that USB-C port, we have mini display port out. You've got another USB 3.0 port, HDMI, and gigabit Ethernet. So it's got all the ports you need. I like that they've got a lot of these ports configured in the back here so you don't have cables all over the place and altogether a pretty attractive machine. Uh, the keyboard is very nice. This is your standard Lenovo layout, so that's been working good for me. Uh, the number pad was a little odd uh, because they did want to give you these big arrow keys, and as such, your number pad is going to not feel very traditional. So if you are somebody that's doing a lot of number crunching, uh, you've got a tiny zero key here. I'm used to a much larger zero key, so I found this not working well for an accounting uh, purpose, but perhaps for gaming, it'll do a little better. Uh, it's not a mechanical keyboard, but it does have a good feel to it. Nice travel to the keys, and again, uh, very well spaced like we've seen other Lenovo keyboards perform. Uh, down here, you've got your trackpad. Uh, this is not a click pad. You've got two separate buttons here. It's pretty accurate. It feels very nice and actually very close to what I have on my 740. Uh, the webcam, though, is on the bottom. This is one of those up-the-nostril webcams. Uh, not the best video quality, so you might want to get a separate camera if you do intend to do some video conferencing on it. Uh, that was done so that you can have these thin bezels at the top. However, they did include a little shutter here on the webcam, which is lacking on my 740-15. So that's one thing that uh, this one has that the 740 doesn't have. All right, so let's go and take a look now uh, at performance. And of course, we're going to look at a bunch of games that producer Jake ran a little bit earlier. So it looks like producer Jake has been busy with some games here. Fortnite, 1080p, ultra settings. We were getting between 80 and 110 frames per second. That's great. Rocket League at 1080p, highest settings. We were maxing out the frame rate at 250, so there you go. Uh, GTA 5, 1080p, DirectX 11, uh, highest settings. We were getting between 20 and 30 frames per second. We maxed out everything there. Uh, once you turn those settings down to something more reasonable, uh, we were getting about 60 to 75 frames per second at 1080p, so easily 60 on this one. Uh, Witcher 3, 1080p, ultra settings. 70 to 80 frames per second. Uh, the 2016 version of Doom, yes, I need to upgrade. I'm waiting for it to go on sale. 1080p ultra settings, 90 to 130 frames per second. Now, one thing we noticed while playing Doom was that initially it was running at about 90 frames per second, and then we noticed the frame rate increasing after the fans kicked up and things started making more noise on the laptop here. And one of the things I've discovered with these Lenovo laptops over time is to make sure that you've got the thermal mode on performance for the most consistent performance out of it, uh, because it does try to balance fan noise. And I think that's what we were witnessing with Doom when we were running it. So just make sure that performance is on. You'll hear the fan kicking on more often, but again, I think you'll see a little bit more consistency there. Uh, we got two other games I wanna show you real quick here. We've got Apex Legends. Uh, 1080p, highest settings, we were getting between 90 and 140 frames per second. And then Call of Duty Warzone, uh, 1080p, highest settings, about 90 to 120 frames per second. Uh, now, we ran all of these at 1080p just because that's the display it has on board. Uh, you can, of course, run games at 4K out the HDMI, but of course, you'll be taking a significant hit in frame rate at that resolution. Uh, the 2060 is good for some 4K gaming, but you won't see this kind of performance running again at the 4K resolution. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 5,766. And if you compare that to the 15-inch version we looked at with the less expensive 1660 Ti, you'll see that these two GPUs perform almost exactly the same. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is on the 2060, you get the RTX features, which provide some really awesome lighting effects. I've got a demo running here. Uh, so you'll get reflections and things in games that support these new RTX features that you won't see on the 1660 variant of the GPU. So you'll save a little money, you'll get the same performance with the 1660 Ti, but again, some of the visual effects that you'll get from these RTX GPUs, you'll not be able to get on the lower cost version. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 98%. That is a passing grade. You can also see the temperatures that were measured 
uh, when running that test. And what that tells me is that you're not going to see a lot of thermal throttling out of this laptop. Your performance will be pretty consistent over extended gameplay periods. The most important thing, though, is keeping the airflow going here. So you want to make sure you're not putting this thing down on carpet because you do have vents here at the bottom that need airflow going into them. Uh, you'll feel a lot of hot air coming out of it. The fans will make some noise. It's unavoidable to have fan noise on a gaming laptop, but as gaming laptops go, this is not the noisiest I have used, but you will certainly hear those fans running pretty hard when you're under full load, and that's something you need to be aware of on any gaming laptop, and this one is no exception to that. Now, one of the things that gaming laptops are not very good about is battery life. This one is no exception. Uh, you're going to be lucky to get maybe four or five hours out of it, even just doing the basics with the display brightness dimmed down. Uh, the reason is, is that by default, uh, Lenovo disables the Intel graphics on the laptop, which would normally give you better performance when you're not gaming. Uh, you can force that back on. That might give you a little bit better battery life, but in its default configuration here, doing nothing, you're not going to get much life out of this thing. And certainly if you start playing games, uh, the battery life will not be great. So you're definitely going to want to keep that outlet nearby. Uh, these things are good for portability, uh, but not good for mobile gaming without a power source nearby. So overall, this is a very nicely performing gaming laptop from Lenovo. They really have a lot of solid stuff, and this one at the midpoint is pretty nice for what you are paying. Uh, again, you don't get some of the bells and whistles that you see on the more expensive 740, so it's plastic, not metal. There's no RGB, there's no Thunderbolt, there's no G-Sync, but it still performs just as well, and if you don't need all those features, I think this is a pretty solid offering for the price point. Remember, you'll be seeing these things available for pretty good prices over the next couple of weeks and months, so keep an eye out for them. Uh, no reservations here whatsoever. Now, one thing we didn't try in this video was Linux, and I would love to get some advice from all of you as to which distributions run best on gaming laptops with discrete GPUs. I've been having some issues getting Ubuntu working, so I want some advice. So let me know what you're using, and maybe we'll do a video in the near future where we take a look at how some of those distributions work on a laptop like this. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.